Hello everyone! It is assembly time again and today we're going to talk about comparisons and jumps. So we'll start out with jumps because we've done these before. If you look at our last example when we did hello world again you will see JMP in here and more specifically this jump statement was used as a while loop where we would always jump back to here and then until we actually jumped out of here, we would continue in a while true loop, essentially. So that's pretty neat, but let's break it down just a little bit more. What, why do we need to jump and how does this example work? And to do that, we're going to just find some white space or in this case, black space to write in on our little blackboard. And let's say you have just a bunch of instructions and this is not actually anything particular but the way assembly works is it starts at the first one and it does the second third fourth fifth and it will continue all the way down the only way to run this one before running uh, and skipping these would be to jump there and the way we would do that is we would jump to some label and at this point we would put in some label with a colon after it and these three instructions would never get hit because it would run the first three it would jump down here it run our no operation which actually is a real instruction that's why it's yellow and then it would run these fictitious instruction command that we have here but it allows us to skip over code in the case of a loop what we have done is the opposite of this where we've done this and then we are jumping to that sum label and it will run these three forever over and over and over because we're never escaping this code so that's a little bit about jumping now this is an absolute jump so we've talked about that we want to have a little bit more logic than that though similar to what we're doing here. More specifically, we're going to talk about the compare statement. So the way compare works is you put in a CMP for compare, and then you will put in the two things that you would like to compare. So we can do like AH and AL, or AX and BX, things like that. And it comes down to state. So the way state works is let's say you want to drive your car to work in the morning. I think that's a pretty reasonable assumption that you would want to do that. And under a normal condition on a normal day, what you would do is you would just hop in your car and you would drive to work. Not a big deal. Let's say that your child borrowed your car and drove it around all night and did not put any gasoline in it. So the next morning you jump in your car to go to work and you realize that the gas gauge says that it is almost empty, which means you need to go get gas or else you won't get to work. That gas gauge is a state. Due to something that happened, in this case your child driving the car, the state of the car is that it is almost out of gas. Now the comparison statement also works with states. Specifically, it works with the flags that we've talked about before. There's the zero flag, there is an overflow flag, there's a parity flag and a carry or borrow flag, depending on if you're adding or subtracting. And what happens with comparison is it will take our AX and subtract it from our BX. And what that will do is if these were the same number, so let's just say that AX happens to equal 3 and BX happens to equal 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Now it does not actually save that 0 anywhere, but it will set the 0 flag. So what we would do is if we said if AX equals BX, we would want to do something. Well, what we can do is jump 0 which means if the zero flag is set, which would be true when three minus three equals zero, 
then jump to uh, our then logic. Um, and you would have a label somewhere else, our then logic, and you would do stuff here. So that is how the if statement would basically check. Now you might be thinking, okay, so if there's a jump zero, is there a jump not zero? And yes, there is. We could jump somewhere else. That would basically be an else statement. So that's pretty handy. Often you will not see it laid out quite this way because it does take a little bit of time, not much, but a little bit of time to jump to another part of the code. So often what you will see is you might see your else statement first because, or else logic I should say, first because hopefully you're not going to hit that and that this line will basically just not happen and then instead of jumping somewhere else for the then part you would just actually put all your instructions here and then after that you would uh, maybe jump away from there or continue onwards and upwards to your next venture in your programming. So you will see different ways of approaching this jumping around. You might see where you jump away for an else and then the thens just carry on or you might jump to a then and do separate blocks or you might see this I, I refer to this almost like an overflow where you're overflowing your logic if you're not jumping away so depending on where you work or your preferences if you're not doing this for work um, you'll establish a specific way of generally doing things. And as you read other people's code, um, you will probably see it done many different ways. So just get used to basically what's happening here. So that's that. Now, there are other flags than the zero flag. There's those other ones that I had mentioned. And besides jump zero, a synonym of that so let's uh, let's call this our then logic again, just because we are trying to keep things simple. Instead of jump zero, you can do jump equals, and they are synonymous. Magically, there's also jump not equals. So this is great. We have figured out multiple ways to determine if something equals something else using numbers or if something does not equal something else using numbers. Okay, well that's great, but often you might want to know if something is less than or less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. And there are lots of these little things. JL is jump less than. JLE is jump less than or equal to. JG is jump greater than. JGE is jump greater than or equal to. And you can use this handy little reference here where we have jump if the overflow flag was set by the last command that you did or by the last command that actually triggered flags to change because not all of them will do that. So you need to keep track of your state, but uh, jump if there's not an overflow, jump if the signed bit is set to one or if it's not, um, and you can read. So this is a handy little reference here. It, it looks like it's at unixwiz.net. So um, there you go, this handy little table. Uh, hopefully will also appear on my website in the future. I have found out that maintaining a website and making videos makes things not twice as long, but much longer than that. So I will try to keep up with the website, but I do want to get videos out because more people are watching the videos than going to the website. So I want to keep the majority of people happy. All right, so there's that. And then if you want a definition of the flags, here's a nice little short definition they have on here. Um, the carry flag or borrow flag, depending on how it's used. Um, you can kind of even see how these are set. If the, um, so less than, uh, if the signed flag, 
does not equal the overflow flag. Um, so if the if it didn't overflow and it didn't trigger this to be set, if it doesn't match the sign flag, um, you can you can start to look and see how this works behind the scenes. But ultimately, if you just want to um, use them, you can just memorize these or have the table handy and you can look at it and uh, you might not even care about the flags behind the scenes of how it's doing it. You just know that if you're doing a comparison, which jump statements will work. Now, jumping doesn't only work with compare. I was purposely not going to get into this, but it feels like it must be discussed. Up here we had this OR statement. And we did this to check if AL is zero. So rather than comparing AL to AL, we did an OR statement. I'm assuming, because I haven't looked at the OR statement in a while, I'm assuming we did that because there are fewer clock cycles for it to do that. And OR is a bitwise function since we're discussing this. So we'll just work with a nibble here. If you have this nibble or this nibble, remember it's looking at each bit and seeing if either bit is a one or a one. So one and one or is one, zero and one, or would give us a one for sake of clarity, zero or zero gives us a zero, one or one again gives us a one. So if either of these happens to be set to a one, it will give us that one exists. So our outcome in this example would be one, zero, one, and one. This is an or. If this was an and, one and one would give us a one, zero and one, that's not, both of them are not ones. So we would end up with this. This is and, the other one is or. Now in this specific example, as you can see, if these are numbers other than being zero, we're always going to get a number. However, if in the case of AL, again, this is a nibble, not an entire byte, but you can use your imagination. If it was this, the only thing that would ever give us a zero or set the zero flag would be the number zero. So that's how we check for our null byte in our string. Great, so let's talk about comparing strings since we're dealing with strings. We have talked about comparing numbers, whether they're less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, other fun things. Let's talk about strings now. So when you're working with strings, what you will have to work with is your source index and your destination index. So what we'll do is we'll set our source index to we have our hello world again string. So we will set it to our string label address. And after that, let's put in a, another string. Feeling exceptionally creative today. And what we'll also do is another string length because we need to know lengths in this case. And I did briefly talk about this before. The way this works in this example here is I don't know exactly what address this is at. I suppose I could look at the binary file and find out what it is, but we'll just say this is address 100. Well, after that, this is 101, 102, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this label will be at address 115 in this fictitious example of this being 100. If we take our current address, which is 115, and we subtract this, which happens to sit at 100, it will give us the number 15, which means our string is 15 characters long, including the null byte. And that null byte is sort of important with this. So now with our 
source index, we just have string label. What we will do is we'll move into our destination index, another string, and then we will move into our counter register, another string length. After that, we will do compare string byte, and it will look at these two strings and determine if they are equal to one another. Now, I just mentioned that the length is important and that the null bytes are important. And the reason for that is, let's say that this string just said hello. And we were not working with null bytes for whatever reason. What would happen here is this string length would be only five characters long. And the first five characters happen to equal each other. So it will give you a false positive saying, yes, these two strings are exact. However, with our null byte at the end, this is now technically six characters long. The last one is a zero. And this is not a zero. This is a space. So it will actually determine whether or not we can do a jump equal or a jump not equal with our strings. So that is pretty handy stuff. It does make me laugh um, a little bit with the zero. Um, back in the day, there was a program called, I want to say, Andis Wrapper, and it allowed you to use Windows hardware on Linux and Linux requires that you use the GPL licensing and someone got super creative and rather than um, saying that they had the GPL license what they did is afterwards they said something like is not used we use some other license and when the Linux OS would check the license it would see GPL and the zero and it would go, oh, it's using GPL. So it allowed it to work. <laughs> so whoever did that, that was extremely creative. Um, my hats go, go off to them to actually use a flaw, if you can call it that, in the comparison system. But anyway, that is just a little bit programming humor, I guess. Um, it just goes to show how these little zeros can be very important. All right, so we have compared numbers, we've compared strings, and we've talked about jumping. We've even done a little bonus exercise of explaining ors and ands, and how they also can change the state of our flags. So that is all that I had for today's video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video, where we're going to dive in to using some of this knowledge that we learned today. So we will see you then.